It is the moment. It is the time. It's the moment, bitch. We're here. We, we are here. And it, it is the me. artist. Yo, yes. What is up, Lord? How are you? We have Lord right here at Auditory hey, and the baby. Artist. What's up? Yes, yes. I'm good. Um, I just got back from my voice lesson. You know, sick, I had to keep sick. the pipes clean. Hell yeah. Voice lessons in LA. Everybody keeps talking about them. So obviously. They're so worth it. They're going to try to trick yeah. you into believing that they're not worth it. But they're so worth it. Especially if you're a live performer. Well, no, of course. I love your I love your outfit. What is the inspiration behind this outfit tonight? Um, I saw it on my rack and I was like, this is it. <laughs> I was going to wear my Mugler cat suit. I was like, no, because my birthday is on Sunday and I want to mm. save that for that. Right. Like, okay, let me wait. I was like, what else could we bring up? Got this hoe. Yeah, this and you leather, are just that girl to leather. have. You are, you are oh. that girl to have everything in your closet too. Like this is like you dressing down and you're like, oh, this, it's this literally a costume birthday. closet. My closet is <laughs> costume closet. I have everything mm. and nothing at the same time. Oh my god! Well, I'm really happy to have you here. I've been waiting for such a like long happy to time. Be here. Yes, um, you have a new single out right now, which is insane. It's called Rush, and Rush. there's just no way. There's no one word to explain the song, so I really have to just ask so many different questions because what the yeah, hell? ask away nobody yeah, yeah. ever asked me questions about anything so it feels good to talk about myself everybody's been saying that too <laughs> um so rush it, it, the song first off i just want to say congratulations i know how hard it is to fully manufacture a single and then also push it to the masses right and to like yeah bitch be vulnerable as well you know what i mean that is just yeah. future rock how was that really just being able to release that into the atmosphere and and oh my god it felt so freeing because a lot of the music that i've been releasing the three singles previously pop lilu um muse and then rush they're all songs that have been in the making for like two three years now Mm. so like finally letting them see the light of day is so rewarding like i'm at the point right now where i want to move forward and just like keep pushing and making new stuff but i'm I owe it to my previous self to put these out. So I'm just like, yes. I'm like finally reaping the benefits of these hits. Because I think yeah. they're hits, you know? And no, they have I mean, to the light of day. Undeniably hits. And then it's also just really refreshing to hear that stance too. Because a lot of people, including myself, I am always terrified to release out into the world. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's your baby, right? Like, that's your yeah, baby. It's, yeah, and once you release it, it's not yours anymore. Exactly. Like, that's like, it's almost dead to me. It's like, it's like my baby, my baby turned 18 and now yeah. it's out on the street. Oh but it's God. like, bitch, <laughs> yes. hopefully uh, it's like sink or swim. And, right. you know, we've been sinking, but we're going to start you, swimming soon. But you pull up and you swim and you just, you like almost give yourself the trust to just let the art speak for itself. And, and honestly, yeah. after working on something for so long, I feel like it is a little bit easy. It does feel natural, but then, you know, you always are going to feel protective right yeah um, so dope dope single and i'm glad that it's finally out and i'm glad that you didn't you know you didn't fall into that um category of people who keep things boxed up and don't release because that needs to be heard a lot yeah, of the music... no, i'm trying to stand on business yeah. and follow through with everything i say i'm going to do so here we are rush is that. out all these I things love that. out hell yeah um so okay you have this very interesting um i want to say enigmatic aura to you right like you're Mm. always like you're always it's like we expect the unexpected with you right yeah oh I love that what what inspires that with you like is there something that specifically gets you into the headspace of like I'm gonna get into artist mode I'm going to become this person you know like for instance Lady Gaga with uh well, Lady Gaga, I guess, you know what I mean? But then like yeah. Beyonce with Sasha Fierce and like they all have these rituals where they're where they're like spending time gathering like all these different things that make them, you know, that fierce woman, right? Like what does yeah. that for you? Um, it's so funny because I get this a lot, but I see myself as like this little like like bubbly, easygoing, like very open book type person. Really but are. it's so funny like when lord right comes the fuck out lord right comes the fuck out it's yeah. so weird and it's just like i've always been a performer naturally that's how i've always been like from like age five like doing my little choreo in the living room for my parents you right. know training the training always, for this moment yes this one moment and now like 
I realize that I finally have it in my grasp and I have control of the situation. Mm. So it's easy for me to get in and get out. And at the same time, I don't want to separate Lord Wright with like Lord Wright as like the, 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 the pedestrian, you know, because <laughs> we are the same person, obviously. The pedestrian. But yeah. It just, I just always had an eye for performance, a love for performance. And I see my life as performance and that's mm -hmm. kind of what pushes it forward. Right. Now that's beautiful. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I want to ask a follow-up then who is Lord, right? Like who is that other Lord? Cause you know, all one, but there is that side that comes out that gets you through like those scary nights when you have to be on stage and you're like, maybe not feeling. Yeah. You know, who is that? Like, let, let us find Lord out. Wright is just a bitch that doesn't take any shit, listens to nobody, and does what the fuck they want to do. Like, that's just how it is. Yeah. I truly believe that I have this fire in me that mm. refuses to go out. And that to mm -hmm. that's for and performance, that. that's for life in general. It's gotten right. me this far. Like, yeah. I know I'm still very, very early on in my career, but I truly believe, like, right now, if I keep the fire up and keep the desire it will take me all the way you know yeah and it's also a testament to the fact that you love what you do because i love yeah it's it's not even a choice like being mm -hmm. an artist isn't a choice like it is my existence like right like i always see people like oh you don't have to create all the time to be an artist and i i feel that wholeheartedly because even when i'm not sitting down and creating something i'm in my head designing something in my head. I'm, I'm planning, I'm mm -hmm. I'm thinking of how I'm going to execute the next thing. It's right. just a way of being for You're me. You're always in that workshop. You're always yeah. working on the next thing. Yeah. Like, and it, it kind of sucks because it. it's a struggle I have because I have a problem with staying present because I'm so caught up in this like fantasy world of like, it's just, it consumes everything. But as an artist, it's my biggest strength, you know? Right. So right. It all depends on like where you apply it. Yeah, and I mean, that's really important, too, because, like, I, I just said this, too, the other day, but if you have a toolbox with the wrong tools, what's the point of a toolbox? Bitch, what am I going to do with that? Here I go, Nothing. too, giving a handyman reference. Um, no, so, like, literally, though, it, it's applicable. Yeah, no, um, exactly. And I and I think that you, you do such a great job. And, I mean, with Rush, too, there's a clear example of how you're using your tools. That track is just... It, it it obviously is an energetic track. It's like very mm -hmm. rhythmic. It's very for the clubs. But at the yeah. root of it, it's a very simple instrumental, right? Like a lot it of is, that magic yeah. is you. A lot of that magic and that like energy and that charisma is you. And, Thank you, you know, I, I guess where is that? What is that sanctuary like inside of the studio when you're able to just release all these, you know, um, all these naysayers in the back of your head, maybe that's saying, you know, like, don't do this or do this. All the, all yeah. yourself your your biggest critic right so like yeah. how do you how do you find sanctuary and like just being creative and not being afraid to be vulnerable it just comes from years and years and years of not doing it you know like before i've been making music and releasing it since 2017 mm -hmm. and i was making music for everybody else except for me you know like mm -hmm. i yeah. was like putting out the corniest shit ever. Like listening back right. to now to it now, it hurts to listen to because I'm like, Man. this is not me. I don't know. Yeah. Like, who is this? So now, like I said, like now that I realize I have the control, mm -hmm. fuck everybody else. It's me. Like, and also exactly. the people that I look up to, they always say when they listen to others is when they release their worst work. And you can you can hear it in like the discographies. So I'm not gonna I don't want to make the same mistake for myself. Right. Right. Yeah. And and a lot of artists too have, I don't know if this applies to you, but they are very egomaniacal when it comes to like creating their art. Like they don't want yeah. any outside voices, rightfully yeah. so. Yeah. That's yeah. how I am too, honestly. Like my creation process is very, very lonely. Like when I recorded Rush, I locked myself in Pirate Studios for eight hours they're doing a little eight hour sale block and it was like 60 bucks eight hours like sign me up bitch I and i day, yeah. spent the whole day just busting it down and it was excruciating it was so yeah. painful having to record your own vocals back and forth back and forth back and forth you know yeah. it's hot as fuck in there like is, yeah. people drumming got the djs going on the deck they're trying and to no like, one ever it out. brings this up but it's also dark and depressing 
It's so dark. And that tiny ass box. But you know what? Yeah. Thank you, Pirate. <laughs> if Pirate ever sees this, because they're doing God's work, you know, they're making no, they really so are. much more accessible for yeah, people like so us. Dope. Yeah, but we gotta love it, them, but you know, the studio itself in general, I can always be a little bit, um, it can be, it can block the creative flow that is natural when you're like outside. Yeah, or, like usually when I go to, when I get a strike of creativity or I wanna write or I wanna get some demos, vocals down, I'll do it here in my apartment where I feel comfortable and mm -hmm. like when it, like I can do it when it hits me at Pirates when I'm trying to get down to business. Like it's like, we're coming here to work. We're coming here to use our voice as a tool to lay these vocals right. down yeah. and then we're getting the fuck out. That's how it is. Right. Because at the end of the day, it is also money. <laughs> it, is, it is money. money Not even know? to put it like that, but yeah. you know, we got to We got to make a living somehow. Yeah. And you got to, yeah, it's a real grind and a real like you again are using those tools, you're using whatever you can. And again, you are doing the best job at it. Like it doesn't even seem like that is your last resort. It seems like, this is music that you genuinely are just coming up, coming up with off the whim because you're just so naturally good at it. You know what I mean? And Thank I think that, yeah. that is where there is a defining line between artists who are rushing and doing hodgepodge music and then artists who are using, you know, every single resource they can to make the best music they can. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's that's dope, though. Um, So Rush, can I ask about the production behind it? Because there's a there's a. Yeah. I hear like a lot of pulls from specific uh, producers, including Danger. I hear like some Danger yeah. influence in there. I hear some yeah. um, Timbaland influence. What were your influences when Absolutely. creating the production of Rush? Okay, so these singles are going to lead up to an EP release. Oh, release date to be determined, but, Announcement. but this year to reference No Dada's interview, mm -hmm. this year is the release. <laughs> but, um, I want to pay homage to everyone that came before me and that inspires me as an artist. Right. And I'm using that as a way to push my backlog out to the world. So there's a lot of me playing around with my references and some of them are quite like on the nose, which is intentional. Like right. the Timbalands, like drums, you know, mm. like like the synths. Like I modeled it to be like almost like a Nelly Furtado, like, you know. And you, but you hear Nelly in there. It's so clear. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I know no matter where I go with production, whether it's on the nose or not of like a reference, I know that my vocal take on it or like my lyrics, my cadence, the way I sing, right. will set it apart enough for it to be Lord Wright, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's one of those things where you also like going back to where you shut yourself into your creative bubble because you want it to be 100 percent you. Um, yeah. It is also OK to be naturally inspired by the world around you. But again, absolutely. It's that key part of making it you putting that yeah. last splash of uniqueness in there. Right. Exactly. Um, I always bring this quote up, but Rick Owens he publicly denounced mood boards, right? And um, his reasoning is because it leads you to create something that's too on the nose. So using a visual reference of what you like in your own head helps you create the most unique art because you're not looking at something being like, oh, they did this, let me do that as well. It's how yeah. you interpreted that person's art and how you want to incorporate it into your own. I think that's so beautiful. And that always belonged in that school of thought as well. I think it's right. really cool. Yeah. And it, it's also dope when your favorite artist is able to allow that to happen because sometimes, you know, artists do kind of paint the picture beforehand, right? Like some artists yeah. just give you the entire theory of, or not theory, they give you the entire um, theme and motif of the album and like what this means and what color, da, 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 when at the end of the day, it is kind of fun to just be able to sit back, right? And then be like, this really, re this reminds me of walking down the park and um, hearing yeah, birds like, chirping. It's and, up for interpretation. Know? I never want right. to tell my fans or listeners mm. what to feel, how to interpret my art because it's not mine anymore. It's yours, you know? Right. But no, with Rush and with the lyrics, like there is that seductive um, flow to it. You know, you're almost kind of, you're, you're like, trickery almost in a way it's like 
you yeah. think that you think that what I'm doing is for you, but really it's for my gain. And it's for me. I get yeah. the benefit for the, all the way around. Like every base that's being touched in this transaction, I'm benefiting from. You're just my little trick. Yeah, exactly. Because Rush, like the whole song is an ode to my days as a sex worker, you know, pulling right. tricks, like yeah. getting the bag, mm-hmm. like selling the fantasy, you know, you want yes. this, you want this, right. but it's not yours. And in my head, I know you don't have it, you know? Right. It's yeah. like a way to like fantasize and glamorize it, even though like worst time of my life. But you know, right. and it's things also to get by reclaiming that power. You exactly, know? it's mine. It's my power. It's my money. I work right. for this. You mean right. nothing to me. And you know, it's just a job. Day, it's your. It's also your body and your you know decision to do whatever you want with it. I feel like we live in a exactly. world where everybody is so quick to put whatever they project onto other people and so lame listen bitches Mm. need to start minding their damn business for real if everybody's minding their own business the world would be such a better place it really would i don't know why it's a hard concept to grasp i don't know either but i I think it's so dope that you are just not even pulling back on that you're actually double downing on it double doubling down on it you're you know putting it into the song and you're singing about it and you're like making it art you're also encouraging the next person who is listening who may also be in the same industry that you were in. Yeah, yeah. Feel empowered by that track. You know what yeah, I mean? Feel the bitch, feel the fantasy. Because you know, that is uh it's necessary for some people, you know, it's like there's no other option and they have to do right. what they have to do. And there should be no shame attached to that. It should be empowering, if anything. You know, exactly, exactly. And then when you were writing the lyrics too, do you did you like so who did you work with first off? I also wanted to ask that because I do the production in there is so specific and so unique. I want to know who is behind producing this. Me, babe, all me. I knew that. I was setting you up to just because you are so yeah, like, it's all multi-dimensional. I produce everything myself. Uh-huh. And that's something that people yeah. need to stop and think about for a second because that's a lot of different roles. Yeah, I know. I honestly consider it like like when I think on like a chart what really sets me apart from others i do think that like that's my superpower and my super strength like being able to produce myself because i can do this all, all by myself this is my show you know i can right. run this show yeah it honestly it makes me feel unstoppable right and you are also at the end of the day building a whole entire empire from scratch you know what i mean you don't have to yeah. rely on like 10 other people to get something done you can you, I mean, yeah that's honestly helps. why i kind of learned how to produce because I'm t- i was tired of waiting others you know like i was making music in small town maryland there was right. nobody else really except my best friend zach that was making music like me and doing the damn thing so yeah, it's like damn gotta so figure Ma- it out myself maryland wait a minute so what part of maryland are you from Oh my God, Southern Maryland. Um, to be specific, Mechanicsville. People always think I'm lying, wow. but the town is called Mechanicsville. Um, surrounded by Amish people, farmland, cows. Like, I'm how was that for you? Like, how was that for you growing up? And like, obviously, here you are. You know, modern day, you're Lord Wright. You're this amazing, yeah, artist. But like, how was that growing up there? Always just so so different than everybody else like so different I always felt misunderstood like you know like I was like and this is this is like a queer story like it's one that we've heard many times before but like I just never felt like I belonged anywhere especially being so I'm mixed my mom's white my dad's black but I was raised by all white people you know Mm -hmm. and being like the queer black people in the family for lack of a better term like literally (laughs) right it's just like, how do you not feel that way? Mm. Especially when like you're into the arts, you want to sing, you want to perform. Like they ask you what you want to be when you grow up, a superstar. And they look at you like, that doesn't happen here, you know? Mm-hmm. It's no, just exactly. like, it takes a toll on you after a while. And it mm. kind of followed me through middle school, high school. But high school is when I started hitting my stride. I was like, fuck y'all. I'm getting the fuck out of here. And then I moved, right. I moved away. I moved to L.A. Wow. And then when you, so when yeah. you moved to LA, like, what was that culture change, that culture shock like, right? Because everything is so different in LA. LA is like the extreme opposite of Maryland. Yeah. I kept telling myself, like, because you always had this idea of like the big cities, like the, an idea of what New York's like, an idea of what LA is like. 
Mm. I had no fucking idea. I'm from small town Maryland. Like, I have no idea. Oh, you know, I'd gone to New York City before. Like, I ran away in high school to fucking be with my little boyfriend, but I had to come back. So, like, <laughs> I knew big city life a little bit. Yeah. But coming back now, the idea of what I had of LA, nothing like what it actually is. Like, I got here. Mm. I was like, damn, like I thought I knew shit. I didn't I don't know yeah. nothing. Like I don't know smoke anything. Smoke and mirrors are gone now. It's smoke just like and mirrors, honey. Right in your face. It's crazy. And it's honestly, in a way, it's kind of nice because it led me to stop idolizing and putting people that I once looked up mm-hmm. to on a pedestal because I realized, oh, they're just like me. I'm just like right. them. Yeah. You know, and it kind of makes the dream seem 10 times more achievable, which is really inspiring in a way. So I find inspiration in that. Right. And that is very, that's very important to touch on because a lot of the times when you, when you are, when someone else follows that path, right. And they go from like a small town to like either LA or New York, it could be the complete opposite. They can get exposed to that and then be like, you know, terrified of that yeah terrified of the rejection terrified of the fact that like there are going to be people who you are sharing in the scene with who become successful before you and you have to deal yeah. with that you know what i mean so yeah. um you know it's la is a tough town so is new york but yeah you know you either rise up or you sink to the bottom and i think that you are doing a yeah great job. and sitting there being yeah. bitter and mad only decreases <laughs> your chances of fucking rising up i've right. never understood that young me would mm. get that way and I could never put my finger on why it was like that me mm. now I want everybody to win because I see what it's like and I know yeah. that there's room for everyone you nobody is doing exactly what you're doing you yeah. know somebody else boosting themselves up in the industry does not steal your spot right and it I love to hear that never how it is that's that is the tone of someone who's very secure in what they do it's just how it is you You know know? yeah i love that i love that that's dope and i also want to touch on another part of rush Mm -hmm. the visual right you gave us such a dope visual like can i just say you do the like pose into the camera you you do the pose and the stare down into the camera like nobody else it Uh, is just art in the making that was improv in no way. Well, yeah. I want to know. The I mean, only I know thing. But... On... Wait, say it again. No, continue. Let us know. No, like, the I... only <laughs> part that was like choreographed was the chorus, like the hip floor work. Blah, mm. blah, blah, blah. Everything else was fucking improvisation. Right. And that's why when I'm on Drag Race in five years, I don't want to hear shit because I because you got it. Everything that it's. No, you are the team. Thing. You like that was like I was like imagining I was like because it was like a like a fifteen hour shoot day like all in total like by the end of it Man. I was like hmm like what would the queens do if they were shooting you know because I'm obsessed with drag race right now so I'm like let me just like stand here right, and yeah. we're shooting and what then are you like, like for you this know, season can I ask that I'm not watching it but I'm not watching yet me I don't either have you were gonna say a queen's name and I was just gonna agree and nod <laughs> okay but listen. I, this may be controversial. I don't know. I haven't watched a season, but plain Jane. I keep hearing shit, and that bitch you seems bad. So? I don't know. Oh shit! I don't know. Put your lottery ticket in on that. Um. Well, I do want to say too, outside of just being your own team for the uh, the visual for Rush, who yeah. or if I guess did you work with anybody outside of your normal like, you know, visual creation zone? Yeah. Did you have more resources to ex- to use at your exhaust this time? Around? Absolutely. So the only, I'm not big on resolutions for New Year's, but this year I had a few goals. And the only one I had this year was to have a music video, like a fully realized visual. So New Year's rolls along. I posted my story. Hey, like looking for resources, like reach out if you like know anybody. Instantly, my girl Kelsey, who used to party with, Mm. Hollywood hits me up. Hey, I'll be in town from New York this day, this day, this day. We should do it. I was like, okay. So I'm thinking like a little, you follow me around Hollywood with a camcorder. We get some right. little back shots. You know, I yeah. edit it together. We put it out, you know? Mm-hmm. This bitch went above and beyond her and her book and random. Uh, and that must be the, that must be like the best Words. feeling ever, right? Yeah. Like she yeah, was like, I- 
she hit me, she texted me, she said, um, so I'll hit you with the treatment in a few days. A few days roll by, a treatment. Wow. This bitch, point for point, honey, mm. exactly what I asked for yeah. in the most visually appealing way. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, would you mind if we like book this set, like the stage? I'm like, that's cool on, but who's going to pay for this? Because, honey, I ain't got no money. Right. She's like, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Man, okay, you have to love what? that too because that is just Oh my God, it meant the world to me. Because as someone who is willing to, you know, take their craft, which is really hard work at the end of the day, yeah. and literally give it to you on the mere faith that like you are going to be a superstar one day, right? Yeah, like they just so really believed in the vision. And as an artist, like you can't ask for anything more than that. Like that is just, that's everything I need, you know? Yeah. That it's that satisfaction Beautiful. and that payoff. Um, I'm really happy yeah. to hear that. Um, I also saw on your social media that you had a choreographer for Rush. How was that? I did. Oh, get you, honey. How was that? Oh my God. So again, post my story. Looking for a choreographer, who hit me up instantly, like like 20, 20 minutes later, 20 minutes to an hour, hits me up. Hey, me, please, me. Wow. Two days later, we're we got that dance studio book. We're sitting there busting it down. Eight count. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Bow. And the, when got you that guys sit down. When you guys went into the dance studio, though, did you guys have like a? Did you have a specific vision that you wanted to achieve? Like, did you have anything in your head already? So I'm not a dancer mm. at all. I can move. I can do choreo. I'm not a dancer. Right. She apparently had set choreo going into it, but eventually, like everything just occurred naturally and she came up with choreo on the spot but we kind of just like felt out and that was the choreo that made its way into the video and shit was sickening and it was all done within an hour and we like got the eight counts down and i came home i bust that shit down every day to the video shot so i wouldn't fuck up we get to the video shoot done done that's dope i mean that just speaks to how like true the vibe was in the connection right and also it's not hard that bitch is bad it is not, I said it's not hard to just freestyle jam to rush. It it really is like a fucking the drums, the way they bounce. Yes, as the... soon as it opens up too, right? Bah, um, bah, yo, bah. yeah, yeah. If Come you haven't on. heard it, if you haven't heard it already, we're actually gonna play it right now. So stay tuned. This is Rush by Lord Wright, and we'll be right back. Get into it. yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh. Fast money on the dash, took me in the eyes, tell me, tell me that you want it this way Don't get my shot, but I commit the crime in the right place, you, 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 you can have it all day ha, I laugh like a cash going on my ass, the dash on them, this a motherfucking parlay At the end of the day, no need to be safe, why? Cause it's just a game I play, and it makes me feel so good da, 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 da.
All right. That was Rush by Lord Wright. Ah, 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 Fucking phenomenal ah. track. Knocks so hard. Um, did you shake your ass? I know you did. If I had I it to shake, shake, it would have been jiggling, googling, and bouncing. Oh, oh. oh. Hell yeah. Yes. yes. Um, wow. And then also it's crazy because this last song, Rush, is a lot different from the previous single, which if I'm not mistaken, is either Muse or Pop. Lilu, baby. Lilu, right. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So that's worlds away from Rush. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Muse and Pop still have that like similarity in the pop essence, but like Lilu is yeah. very much you can throw, I mean, almost, I mean, the hi-hats are pretty much trap. Like it sounds like yeah, a it's trap, a trap like, song, yeah. Playboy Cardi, like yeah. And honestly, I think that's so dope. And so, what has the what is it like? I guess the journey between bouncing between tracks and releasing these singles and like yeah, because you already have a lot of material that could be put into a small project and be cohesive and tell a story. Yeah. How do you leap though from like each song but still keep that co- cohesiveness? So, I've always kind of prided myself prided is that even a word yes it is now actually <laughs> we're that? putting that in the dictionary I've always today prided myself on right. being extremely versatile in more ways than one Ooh. but <laughs> catch it catch it catch, catch it. it catch it <laughs> right but it's always been a challenge of mine trying to create one cohesive sound so what i did with all of these singles and the ones to come I limited my production set. So Mm. I chose through a certain few Mm. cents and I kept bringing those back and back and back. So in Logic, I would only use like the same five, six instruments. Right. Excluding like the drums. But that was a way for me to kind of see what I could do with what I had. And also a problem that I also have is indecisiveness. Man, so tell me about it. Yeah. When I'm provided with too many options, it's never getting done. It's never getting done. Maybe I need an Adderall or something, but it's never getting done. Right. So when I have limited options, I flourish. And that's what happened right. with these few tracks and the right. ones to come. Right. That's such an interesting approach too. And I could only imagine how much it helps because it's like, you're again, just isolating all the noise and getting yeah. down to really like what the nitty gritty of the actual art itself is right yeah and separating the ego from that um and lilo too just to touch on that is also this like spacey uh layered wet type of production like those are the notes i give production absolutely yeah did you go into that like with this urge to make something that was a little bit more, more warmer on the wet side or did you because um... again like muse and pop and rush in my head they're a bit more percussive. They're a bit more, um, they're a bit more like general pop. And then Lilu is like this, you know, standout single where it's very much like all trap. How, like, did you already know that's where you wanted to go or did you lean into that? See, I've always had this kind of like trap influence or attitude at least, which kind of shows, I think, in everything that I put out that like, I don't give a fuck, bitch, like anti energy. Right. And with Lilu, I was living in Ohio, bum fuck nowhere, Ohio. Yet again, I keep finding myself in these places. I don't know why. Yeah. But Calling to you. my hair was freshly dyed orange. Mm. I love the fifth element. So Lilu from Fifth Element was like a big inspiration. I was like, what would she sound like on this shit? And that's kind of what guided the production. It was just like so... something super spacey. I don't really like to associate my sound with hyper pop it's like that kind of come and gone no shade yeah so i wanted to do something adjacent to it without kind of touching on it directly on the nose right that's kind of where it just came from it i would say muse and lilu are the oldest tracks that have come out Hmm. pop is the most recent but and so and muse are the oldest so do you have i guess now that you told me that is there yeah. ever a pull and like a push and pull with releasing tracks and like do you have that conflict in your head of like this this song needs to be released before this song or yeah, like this yeah. in my in my universe goes you know i want all the hits out first like if i think the song has an ab- the ability to catch i want it out as soon as possible so pop 
I was like, this is a fucking track. Put it right. out. And that was the most recent one. So I was like, it was fresh on my brain. It was the most exciting to release. So I was like, let's go. Yeah. The use, however, I I knew I was gambling with that one because it's not very catchy. You know, it's kind of very what? indulgent. I don't know, but looking at these numbers. Oh, uh, well, I mean, me right. Numbers are one thing, and it sucks yeah. today because uh, numbers mean so much, and numbers are also skewed by the algorithm. But yeah. I'll say, Muse, out of all your singles, is actually my favorite, Thank and you. I mean a that. lot. A lot of people who really listen say that, and that really means a lot to me because with Muse, that's the one I really sat down the most with and was like, how do I create this sonic world and mm. get it to read to others and that was like Muse. And there's yeah. a few others that are coming that are like that as well. But with Pop, Rush, Lilu, I was really just talking my shit, you know? I was I was yeah. writing perfect pop songs in my eyes. Like, commercial, like, in, in a Lord Wright way. Right. But however, like, But you were sticking to the formula that has proven successful for other artists. Yeah, right? because I think being, putting out self-indulgent work is a privilege, one that I do not have, being that I have no fans. Right. As of right now, like I really yeah. have no listeners, so right. I need something that's gonna stick like grit. I need it right. to, I need to throw it at the wall yeah. and stick, and right. then we can play around and really get down to the nitty and gritty. But right now, yeah. is not the time for that. Hey, so I wish you, it was. You're being very responsible. You're actually, yeah. you know, doing yourself. You're the label almost. You're the label for yourself. You're like, okay, yeah. Lord, I know you want to put this out, but we got to put this out because this. And I love that too. Um, and yeah. you know, you do a beautiful dance with the two. Because mm. at the end of the day, these are still tracks that you want people to hear and that you want out. Um, right, yeah. And then also, so to segue into Muse, and we are going to play Lilu. I don't want the listeners to get all freaked out. We will play Lilu, but I want to You will get touch, your time with it, babe. Yes, I want to touch on Muse because Muse has that, I don't know if I would call it the chorus. Maybe it's a hook, but you would tell me. But the... Um, the make me your muse, muse, hey. muse, yeah. right there. That I think is almost not to sound like over cliche, but it's kind of groundbreaking. The melody in itself oh, is just it's like a lot. No, it's hey. psychologically a tongue. Like it, it makes your tongue want to just say it over and over and over again, you know. And you yes. have a lot of moments like that too. Like even a rush, like that whole dun dun da da. I go back. I'll rewind and go back to that part of the song just to hear that. And I think that's so smart. I don't know if you're doing yeah, that on purpose, but you. it's just smart because I'm, I'm not, and I'm glad that it's reading this way because it's just what it comes naturally. So the fact mm. that it is translating is really, really great. Yeah, no, it, it is, and um, yeah. So it's interesting though to hear that, like, um, well, it's just interesting to hear that Muse isn't doing the most that it can do, and to that point, also, I mean, trimming wise and on Spotify and on yeah. SoundCloud, what is your take on? how influential streaming services and how influential numbers and all these different, um, I guess, means of measuring success. How has that been for you? Because I know it could be hard and challenging um, when you're seeing everything around you tell you that the only way that your music will be successful or that your music is good is if it has this amount, this amount of streams or, you know. Yeah. How do you Well, do you know, that? it is hard especially in the age of social media because comparison is so big you can say you don't compare yourself to others all you want but i guarantee you you have your moments and i know i do um not so much anymore but especially with streaming and being able to see the numbers everywhere like it's a numbers game i i'm 20 i'm 20, turning 22 on sunday oh, so i wasn't alive for like the 90s yeah no. but i know that back then due to like lack of internet access numbers weren't everywhere so it wasn't dictating oh well this bitch got it oh because she got mm -hmm. a million oh she's she, she part of the billion club like she's the best you know mm -hmm. it wasn't like that it was what did you like the best sonically like what what stuck out to you now not so much because right. we're so quick to judge everything because all the information is right there in front of us yeah so it kind of sucks but i truly believe that True talent always sticks around and always gets its time in the sunshine. And right. I use that to kind of keep me sane yeah. as I go through this process. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I was glad, I'm good. Um, I'm glad to hear that because of the fact that like you have to keep putting out good art. You can't sacrifice the you art. You can't, you can't. Cause we will see through that shit 
so fast and it never yeah. lasts and right. they stick for like two seconds but yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be about it not sustainable at all all right let's play lilu because i i promise we would play lilu and we'll be right back and then we're going to touch more on muse because there's so much i want to get into with that track yeah here's lilu by lord right and we'll be right come back. on now don't you go anywhere don't you go anywhere So that was Lilo by uh, Ru- by Rush. Lord have mercy. Let's go back. Let's do that again. I can be Rush for you. <laughs> <laughs> Super Troy, Rush. Troy. So, wh- wait, what is what's what's the reference for that? Ah, is that High School Musical? Rush. No, not the High School oh, Musical do, 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 reference. Have defense, you watched all first, three of though. them? The videos? No, High School Musical. Oh, uh, I watched. Yeah, I did, but I hated the first one. I love the third one. Maybe it's because I'm a baby, but the third mm. one just hit for me. Troy, I don't know what to go. And he's the like, second the one was my shit with fucking Miley's cameo, like at the pool party. Oh my the... god, yeah, and um, that was my shit. Um, dun, 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 the pool dance scene. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wait, oh pool dance? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Not pool dance. Pool dance. Oh, with pool dance. <laughs> I completely heard pool dance. Let's, I'm okay, liking on the song right now. Bad note the choreo. Right, let's let's get back to the podcast. I'm so, I'm so weak. Um, also, we need to hang out in real life because a Come lot on, of, bitch. it's so weird. A lot of these like interviews are just like my first time hanging out with people I've been meaning to hang out with for years. Oh my it's god, crazy. yeah, literally, it's wild. But um, all right, that was Lilu by Lord Wright, and like I told you the song is fucking phenomenal. Um, it makes me feel like a pretty boy. It makes me feel like I'm like you know doing a little TikTok of me getting dressed. You know how they do those like. Uh, challenges where they're all getting in yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Crazy ass outfits. If only it's stuck on TikTok, but I was just about to say it's stuck a very fingers. but it's a TikTok song and it's a good TikTok song. It's not a bad Thank TikTok you. song. So Thank you. Um but I so as mentioned before, I want to talk about Muse. Um yeah, because let's talk about her. 
I like I already said, it's my favorite song. And it's a long song relative to your other singles, I've noticed. Yeah. Which I'm really happy about because again, it's such a dope song that it needs to continue. Um, mm-hmm. what was the inspiration behind writing Muse? So Muse came when I was having a severe bout of writer's block. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know where I wanted to go with music. And I was also living in Ohio at the time. And Muse and Lilu kind of came about the same time. But Muse, I produced the opening of the bow, now, bow, now, bow, ta, ta, ta. Which is I just so heard sick. an interview. I just heard an interview with Max Martin. Mm. And he said that the first three seconds of your song need to be like instantly recognizable. I was like, bitch, yeah. how can we push this to the max? And that's how the intro to Muse came about. But I sat with that intro for years. I couldn't figure out what, what to do wow. with it at all. Like, I didn't know where to take it. I knew I wanted like a little groove to it, but yeah. I didn't have the means to have the drums to kind of back it up, give it life, push it forward. So I reached out to a few producers like, hey, like I have this track I would really like some help on, which I rarely ever ask for help. But right. I'm real. I can recognize yeah. when I do need the help. So Which I was is trying to like really important, you know, to have as well, a person, I, I knew it was outside of my skill set and I don't want to let it go to waste. I loved it. So I was reaching mm-hmm. out, hey, would love to like have you work on this track. Hey, would love to have you work on the track. Crickets, crickets, crickets. Cause who the fuck was I? You know, I was also yeah. really ugly at the time, which I think <laughs> had a problem to how do I do with it? Oh but no. We don't no, have that I issue mean, anymore. Hey, we don't listen. Have it anymore. But so they left you. They left you on red, and then when, when was it? On red, got back to you? Names, or who got back but... to you? I guess without naming the names who didn't get back to you. When was that moment? Nobody. Nobody. What? So you produced it yourself? Bitch, yes. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> wow. I waited a few years because you know I would listen to my old shit over and over again. Like, yeah. damn, I gotta do something with it. Damn, I gotta do something with this, and mm-hmm. it just it's just sitting, sitting, sitting. So I was living in this apartment, actually. And I got back to it. I was like, we got to get this ball rolling. So I heard it. And I found this drum loop in Logic, and which I, I rarely ever use, like, the drum loops because they're kind of, like, one size fits all. I don't really like that. Yeah. But I found that one. It was like, dun, 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 dun. it's like island tropical, almost like 90s yeah. percussion. I was like, damn, bitch, we can roll with this. I'm a and little... I really just dragged and dropped it over the, like, the Muse chord progression. Yeah. I was like, oh, bitch, now we're moving. And from then it was history. The fucking song, just the lyrics just came out of me. It was right. just perfect. Wow. That yeah. caught me out of left field because I thought you were going to take what you were saying about how you're reaching out to producers. And oh, one day, you know, after um, throwing that that rope out there, finally someone got back to me. And that's why you got to nobody, keep on pushing. me, myself, and I. But no, you're, yeah, exactly. You, what you're saying and what you're preaching is just if, if no one else is going to do it. I'll do it. Do it your fucking self. Do it your fucking self. Do it your damn self. And that's that's dope because uh, I forgot about that until you just mentioned, and it's crazy because it's the first part of the song, but that is a, that's one of the parts of the song that is a standout. Just because Oh my God, of, it's like my favorite thing ever. It's, it's like so one of my avant-garde. favorite things that I've created. Like, I, like imagine that shit live, huge stadium tour. Like, yes. That was, like, because like, I write a lot of my music because I visualize how, it, how it'll look and sound live. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this has to be here, this has to be here, this has to be here, because I love a production. I'm such a dramatic bitch. I love it. So it right. has to be there. You, and it seems like you also have this theatrical way of looking at your music and your art. It, it feels like oh, you're yeah, directing. I was raised in the theater. It comes naturally. You were? Oh, honey, yeah. Theater kid through and through. Well, uh, and tell me thespian. more. Tell me more. An inducted thespian, honey. Wow. How never got I any leads. Know? Never got any leads, but I blame that on me being a bad influence and being a bad boy when I was in school. In a small town. In a small town, but bitch, I could sing yeah. the house down, and right. I had so much drive, and nobody gave me a chance. But I'm getting, I'm getting my own chance now, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, and I think that's so sick too that you have those skills from the 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 theater, right? The theater. The pull from because those things are what's going to create longevity because you can be slick with the words or whatever, but there's like those nuances that you actually do have. Like even with the rush visual, going back to that, you know what I mean? Like the way you look in the camera, the way you, it's you in the camera, you know, you know, your marks and 
now that you you know say that you grew up in the theater it makes so much fucking sense yeah i'm also just a huge film nerd like i had no friends growing up really i I still don't have any but you know it allowed a lot of time for me to draw myself in media so this fucking this noggin right here Mm -hmm. is full of references inspiration and it guides me in everything and honestly i wouldn't trade it for the world no, you definitely shouldn't. And um, a lot of people are missing that. And I think that's what separates you from the rest. Um, Thank you. So even more so with Muse, I love the cover art for Muse. Um, Thanks. Oh, it's and, my fucking favorite. I just remember yeah. what, what it is. It's Miss Norell. <laughs> right. Honey. With all I the... I will never top that. I will never top that. That was amazing. Pure magic. Can I ask who made the um the one piece that you're wearing that has the like me, bitch. No me, way. Me. How it's what was the inspiration so behind that? That's rough. wild. It's so rough. I don't know. I really have no idea what inspired that. I just mm. love I love the intersection between tech, music, fashion. I just love when it all comes together. Like I wish you could see my lock screen right now on my laptop. It's literally, it's the Lilu cover of me and the circuit board with my right, face yeah. in it. Oh, sick. So inspired by that. And right. I literally, I saw, um, where did I see it? I saw like a skimmed ad. I was like, oh, bitch, you know what would be sickening? If there were like, it was covered in circuit boards. And I just, I bought it and I got a hot glue gun. Me and my best friend, Zach, got the work on set. It said, that's so dope that's so I diy yeah and, it cut uh, the fuck out of me though i left the shoe no covered in blood it was so bad. <laughs> wow. i i still have um the shot the onesie like with with the circuit boards on it mm. blood stains all over but it's worth it it was worth it it was so worth it i'm gonna fuck it was I, so worth it that's great that's great to also hear that you're you know you are also tapping into um the design aspect because yeah even without that just being like some cool conceptual piece just for your single, like yeah. it could be a standalone designer piece. It, it's really dope. And it's also, never know. it's also interesting. And I want to ask if there was any correlation between this either consciously or subconsciously, but yeah. um, the lyrics in Muse from also seeing the cover, I think it could correlate to that, you know, we're being programmed to follow an archetype or yeah you know and that's where the chip ties in but also that's just me being like the listener and seeing what's in front of me and just like yeah google gaga one plus one equals two but obviously you know it more um what was that what was the process of creating the meaning and what is the meaning actually of muse the song so muse is almost a love letter to my future and potential fans it's me proclaiming that I would do anything for them and for the mm. amusement of them. Mm. I am the muse, mm-hmm. you know, paint me. Okay. I'm I'm here to serve you, basically. Sacrificial lamb. Yeah, right? Exactly. Like I I'm here I'm here, that's what I'm here for. I was made for it. I was made for the yeah. abuse. Give it to me. Right. Okay. No, that yeah. makes so much sense looking back at that. And then um it also highlights without because you're doing it you're doing that you know voluntarily but i think a lot of artists get trapped into a place where they have to do that they have to they have to sacrifice their their uh true you know whatever but you're not and it's not even that you're sacrificing your true self because you're not yeah you're just giving everything right to the listener and that in itself is a huge feat right yeah Mm. Yeah, it's just, it... I just love the idea of an artist laying it all on the floor for the ones that love them. You know, like mm-hmm. if I'm your number two, let's jump the gun and tie the news. Yes. If I'm number two, I don't want it, bitch. Kill me. I'm done. Right. You know, no, I'm yeah. done. Like that's right. how hard. Like I think that's so beautiful. Very radical um, yeah. view on like the muse, right? And yeah. I mean that still kind of ties into with the cover um in those like motherboards or microchips mm-hmm. right yeah it's like th- those are pieces that seem so they seem so small but they do so much and they give yeah. so much willingly right you yeah. know and, and it's a stretch but i think that it all ties together like for yeah. news, you know what i mean and again yeah. you i don't know if you went into that 
with that being the intention, but it's a fucking job well done. Thank you. Well I, done. I honestly do think the role that the circuit boards come to play is a reference to the song sonically, mm. production wise. It's so electro heavy that I wanted to pay homage to that visually somehow. I didn't know how to do that. Mm. With the cover for Rush, I struggled with that a bit because I wanted to encapsulate the production again and the cover art, but I also didn't want to give the mm. same thing I gave in Muse. So I was like, yeah. how do I make this work? So I yeah. do think the cover for Rush stands out a bit, but it's not a bad thing. Well, and I also, um, from my perspective on the outside, right? I see the cover art for Rush allowing you to listen to the music more. And yeah, see, see, yeah. It, you know. And in a way, like, honestly, like, I was running low on money, you know? It kind of just worked, yeah. it worked out perfectly. It really did. Because um, the song is so loud, it speaks for itself. Yeah, and it, it, it's a it's a very thick song, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, it it's sounds like... very, like, like juicy. Yeah. Basically, like, the vocals are panned left, right, and middle. you got so yeah. much to work with. Right. Oh, and the drums, too. Um, but yeah, so that that's dope. And again, going back to an earlier point, you're having all these stepping stones within the, the universe of Lord Wright. Um, mm-hmm. Where, I guess, does the universe of Lord, Lord Wright, where does it trace its origins to? Who are those people that you grew up with? Um, loving and uh, running home to like listen to their last album that just came out yesterday and who my are those people first from? cd ever i was just talking about this was the duchess fergie mm. honey mm-hmm. you could not tell me nothing fergie oh, yeah. is glamorous clumsy labels are love that album was like my life for so long i also loved the cheetah girls growing up I'm I'm like obviously a gay through and through. I'm gonna have the same right. references and influences as every right. other queer person on this planet. But right. Madonna, <laughs> Britney, Gaga, Pink for fucking crying oh, out loud. Oh wow, yeah, the Pink best. Is one of the like, best. Mm-hmm. We all got to grow up with the best artists ever. Right. And you know, as I got older, some more different different influences started coming in. Like that's when I started getting the rock music, like especially like '90s grunge, like Nirvana, Smashing Pumpkins. You know. You know, Nine Inch Nails, everything. It just all buffaloes and balls into this huge just pool that I can pull from, mm. which is what I think my versatility on. Like, that. that's what I, that's where I think it comes from. Right. Strength, also a weakness, because it also, like, makes it a struggle for me to create a cohesive sound. But I'm just influenced by everything, film video games you know mm. any type of media nature yeah. it's just i'm just so inspired all the time i think it's a really really beautiful thing that i possess yeah yeah i mean and it, it's it's one of those things where i feel like growing up as a kid you have moments in your life that do impact you in huge ways and i think that if you grow up in the musician path right there are going to be yeah. moments in your childhood that are like musically stamping you you know what yeah. i mean and um i mean for me one of those was like bjork's homogenic album even though it came out oh, before i was born right absolutely honey what is that what is that pinnacle album for you outside of just the duchess like what is another one that just that born really... this way oh born this way mm, is my mm, favorite album of mm. all time that's that's the pop bible that is my pop bible i'm sorry yeah. there is there was nothing that will beat that for me it it just and the thing is i didn't like it at the time i was what like it wow. came out what 2011 2012 i was like yeah eight nine right i didn't get it i heard like you and i on the radio i'm like what the fuck yeah, is how could shit? you where's the dance pop bit right you know but then now you see back and you're looking like, back at mm. it now honey i'll take you out down <laughs> yeah it's it's fucking gold. It's the best. Right. Yeah. It's um, like, um. well, continue. Yeah. There's so many others. Like, there's so many albums. I'm, of course, I'm blanking right now. Oh, right here. Honey. Celebrity Skin by Hall. Sick. I love that poster, by the way. Woo! That's dope. Courtney Love. Honey, mm-hmm. call me anytime. If you see this, I'm waiting for you. <laughs> she is my favorite. Whole, I have a whole yeah. tattoo on my knee. Right. That 
that, that band changed my life. And the for influence, better. I think, with that is so prevalent in the way you carry yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think, I truly believe that, like, that's kind of where I get it from. I've always kind of been, like, the, uh, you know, like, crazy person, like a wild animal. Mm-hmm. I think it's ADHD and mental illness. We're not going right. to point fingers. We're not going to ask questions. We're not going to We're not gonna ask questions point fingers. We're going to move along. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I think it's an asset that yeah. is very valuable. Yeah, I mean, it's super valuable. Thank you for sharing those inspirations, by the way. And yes, of course. Was... There's so many more, but of course, I'm blanking, yeah. but whatever. No, I mean, there, there's so much cool art out there, but I, and I also mentioned this to uh, another friend who's also an artist, but again, you are, what do they say? Like, uh, California is a melting pot. You are a melting pot of quite literally everything around. It's you. ridiculous. Like, if you saw my friend group, like, my birthday party is tomorrow night. Mm. I'm just like imagining every fucking person that's gonna be in that bitch, and it's just so ridiculous. Also, like, happy birthday! We didn't even you. we didn't even acknowledge the birthday queen in the room. Happy birthday! Thank you, thank you, and, bitch. Hmm. My and Brandy's my birthday twin. No way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, wow. I found that, that makes out a few a lot days of ago. Sense. That makes so much sense. Oh, Any plans for your birthday? So um, uh, everything's kind of up in the air, but trust. There will be something. Trust. Cute, cute. Well, very happy much something. Birthday. Very much something. Thank very you. much something kind. Um, but I want to say what other what I guess not what what other, but like how great is it to celebrate your birthday with like the release of Rush? Did you plan on releasing it around the same time as your birthday? No, I was just trying to get Rush out as soon as possible. Um how long have you had that in the canon for? Rush? Yeah. Oh my god. Um God, it's like been like the mixing and mastering process for like two months now. I hit up mm. so my mixing engineer Fred Ten Eleven Theory on Instagram is a fucking oh fucking genius. Mm-hmm. He lives in Greenland, by the way, completely mm. off the grid. Like yeah. it's insane. Like if you look up where he lives, it's crazy. Mm. But he was pretty busy, and I very much believe and you find those who work best with you and you stick with them and I didn't want to go to nobody else so I waited for him until he was ready sent it away he did his thing very speedy very fast and then I went to go have it mastered but the people who usually master myself were on holiday till like mm, a certain a day of- and the new year yeah mm. had to wait a little bit longer but it's out now that's what matters no more stress it sounds yeah. sounds great it's amazing Yes, it does. Okay, dope, dope. Um, so really quick before we play the next song, which is gonna be pop, which is another super sick banger. Love pop. pop. Um, I want to segue into that with pulling something out of my little treasure box that I've been waiting to ask you about, bitch. How big of a role does David? Is my wiener? Sorry. Sorry, that. Actually, how big is your wiener? I've been meaning to ask this forever. Oh wow! You heard that, Man. bitches. You heard that. Man. Uh, no, but how big of a role does um uh David Bowie play in your in your music? Because for me Honey. as a listener, I hear it so like so prevalent. David Bowie. Fun fact: I auditioned for American Idol. <laughs> mm, wait, what is, is there? A tape? Is there a tape of no, you auditioning or no? no. That'd be there so is, sick. There's like news footage of me. Fucking mm. melting in the hot sun, waiting in line, but that's about it. <laughs> I waited in that line for hours. I had laryngitis, my voice was gone, but I was determined to get up in that bitch. Mm. We get up there, they put us on three songs prepared one, Starman, David Bowie. Two, If I Could Fly, One Direction. Classic. The fuck? Classic. Classic. Three. <laughs> three was Like a Stone, Audio Slave. Mm. Fumbled them all, honey. It was horrible. But I took that David Bowie experience with me. Mm-hmm. And for that, amongst other things, it always means so much to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust, one of the best albums ever. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Heroes, one of the best songs ever. Yep. Under Pressure. With Freddie Mercury, right? Yeah, I can't. I can't hear it. Like it, it makes me feel things that I don't want to 
right. experience out in public. Like it, it just, it's so heavy and it means so much to me. That man truly, yeah. his art has changed my and so many others' lives. Like it's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, that's why he is not the greatest, one of the greats, but I think he is yeah. the greatest, and especially, especially when it comes to, um, I guess, the Beatles as a group, but just the way that we approach lyricism today and the song yeah. structure. Um, yeah. And I, I, I wanted to say also in Muse, I think specifically the, I think it's the pre-chorus that you're building into the chorus with, right? Like mm. it, it feels very, it feels a little bit anthemic almost. Yeah. But then there's this softness to it that brings it into the modern day uh, pop realm, right? Because I don't think people are doing the, you know, anthemic, like, yell over and over again the melody anymore. Yeah. Just because it's not selling. But I think you yeah. merge those two um, with, with Muse. And was there any challenges trying to, you know, tap back into something that is you know, a vintage genre, right? Or a vintage um, era of the genre. And then also yeah. as you get into the modern day. Um, well, lore. naturally, I think this has to do with me being an Aquarius. I gravitate towards the classics. You mm. know, old soul, I'm older than I am. Mm -hmm. It was always a challenge for me trying to kind of weave those influences and make them feel fresh and new because they've been done so many times mm -hmm. so you recognizing that it has like a fresh take on it kind of means a lot to me because it's always a fear I have and I I don't think I ever really found a solution for it so mm. the fact people are hearing that and seeing that kind of just means everything and I feel pretty honored that you would say that well I mean you that that <laughs> just goes to show you you pay attention to the details and you know, sometimes, obviously, as the people are, as yeah, as the people who are creating the art, we can't see that, but it's so yeah. prevalent. And um, I think that was something that sold me too. Um, with pop, we can get into pop yeah. now. Um, oh, wait, pop awesome. now. Let's let's before we get into pop too. Let's talk about um, or let's listen. Sorry, y'all. Let's listen to um, Muse before we get into pop because I want y'all to hear what we hear or what we're talking about. Um, so we're gonna play Muse really quick, and then we'll be right back.
Boom. Make me your muse. 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 Oh. That was Muse by Lord Wright. What a banger. Like, yeah. now that we just heard it again, I have to tell you again, banger, 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 banger. Undeniably my favorite Lord Wright track. Um, wow. So let's segue into the next song because I think that these two kind of live together in my head, at least. Uh, Pop and Muse, very similar songs. Hello. Uh, but Pop, you come out of the gate on that track just... I love Pop. And it's just... um. It's really one. It's a joy, honestly, hearing that song. I say hello, this thing can go. I can be on yeah. I'm like, I don't want to get copyright for singing someone's song. Oh, no, honey. I wrote it. I wrote it. I own all the... Yeah. Publishing is um, mine. But that song, yeah. So it's just a joy to listen to. It's so fun. It's so playful. And it really feels like... Fucking uh, stupid. I had such a fun time writing it. It's so stupid. Yeah, like I was working. I was working with my voice teacher today, and like hearing her recite the lyrics, I'm like, "Bro, who the fuck wrote this?" <laughs> but it's one of those things where you can like, you know, like you know, any songs from back in the day that you used to listen to, and now you look back or you listen to them now, and you're like, "What the fuck? Those lyrics literally mean absolutely nothing, right?" No, absolutely, but it's so like I feel like it's the... because it's so fun, it's timeless. Exactly, and there's a technicality that goes into making words that aren't really like groundbreaking together sound very very fun and very cool and very catchy that's the main thing right is you want something that is going to be able to be played over and over and over and over and over again absolutely yeah replay value make it go up so you know you say that you kind of approach it with a playful attitude what is pop about what is going on in that about sex and orgasms it's about sex it's about fucking (laughs) Yeah. Stone cold fucking. Hell yeah. I literally, um, I had just booked my first campaign. I got the check mm. for it. $10,000, baby. Ow. Mm. And I bought my first MIDI keyboard and I was messing around with the modulator on it. Just pressing little keys. And I got to a synth. It was like, mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm. and then slowly it just came to be. And I was like, mm. Oh, this is nice. And it very the synth was very pink to me. And I started thinking of gum, you know. And I was yeah. like, how can I do this? How can I do this? And I was like, oh, I'm like, I'm in the candy shop, Madonna, you know, like her like what very that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I do hear that too. Yeah. And I was thinking like sex. And she's like, it mm-hmm. just came so naturally. I love making formulaic pop, you know, like almost like Max Martin pop. That's a huge inspiration. Max Martin's one of my biggest inspirations. Yeah. I was like, how can I make this shit stick? And how can I make it fun and lighthearted? Because I make such dense music, I feel. Oh, I've made so such dense music in the past. It's kind of heavy. So I was like, mm. I'm trying to focus on just making fun dance pop because the world's too dark right now. We need to dance and have a good time. It's that simple. That's like first order of business. That's a good point. Um, Because I was also going to say or ask, like being that it is such a serious time i mean i guess it's always a serious time but lately it's, i know that's what that's I'm a saying. serious it's all, time yeah right now especially yeah how are you how are you first off like without even you know the contribution of art being involved in the question but like yeah. how do you kind of keep your positive spirits in a time where it feels like everything is just coming to shit i firmly believe you know okay i keep quoting but rupaul this from her mm-hmm. she always says it's important to look at the darkness but you can't stare and so she went about that it may be a little selfish but i do think there's some gold in that statement you know mm-hmm. um there's so much bad happening in the world right now i think me letting that affect me in a negative way and leading me to carry that into my everyday life mm. is doing nothing but more harm. So why do that? You know? Right. Yeah. And I'm, I'm no saint, you know, I'm not fucking Miss Sunshine all the goddamn time, but I do see that people are going through it. You know, mm. the economy is in the trash. Rent prices are super high. Damn Homelessness right. is the worst. <laughs> it's just like, 
Yeah. Damn, bitch, how the fuck are we supposed to live? Right. But you know. Yeah, and what, what you gotta do. And I, I honestly, I'm just so grateful to be here, to be mm. alive, to be young, healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a roof over my head. Not a lot of people can say yeah. that. You right. know, I don't have, I don't have bombs dropping in my backyard every five seconds. Right. You know, there's a lot to be grateful for, even with how things are here in America. Yeah, the gratitude is important. Um, yeah, because it it seems like today or in times like today, it's all we have, right? It's um, literally all we have. Like, yeah, it's it's really bleak if you don't have that. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, thank you for sharing that. Um, and the follow up to that is like creating like, now, creating music and creating art in that space. Like, how has that been? Because this has been such a different time like uh 2020 and then post everything 2020 yeah creating within that time can be so weird how is it for you um or how is I it honestly i thrive in isolation mm. i know a lot of artists that also do that so 2020 horrible year horrible year but for my creativity honey it's never been yeah. better like i had all the power to do whatever the fuck I wanted. And that kind of carried out of quarantine into now. Mm. And I just feel so liberated and inspired. I'm, I honestly, I don't want to sound too optimistic, but I feel like I'm in a state of permanent, I'm permanently inspired by just like everything. Mm. I think it has to do with like my gratitude. I just like, right. I want to, I want right. to do better. I want to be good, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just like, how can I work through this? Like when I write when I write block now, it's how can I work through this rather than I guess I can't make anything, you know? Yeah. So you're like it's a just problem the attitude solver. that I take. Yeah. Oh my god. And I also will not say anything unless I have a solution to back it up. I'm and not I gonna think, be like, damn bitch, yeah. your wig busted. Right. Unless I have a brush to fix it, mm -hmm. you know. I'm, I'm not gonna do that to you because what's the point? No, that I mean that's a true statement, and um, yeah. you always want to have. You always want to have the solution or at least a, an idea for solution before you just come to your boss being like, uh, the, the toilet's Bitch, broken. I hate that. You know? Okay. And what do you mean to do fucking shit on your face? Like, what right. am I supposed to do with that? It's like, start brainstorming some things. Uh, 2020, definitely. And I, I guess every year after, including this year, what the fuck, right? Like, what has been happening? What's been going on? And so you say, you say that gratitude is something that keeps you afloat and keeps you going, keeps you motivated. Um, and then also creating in that space, right? Creating in this space of having to isolate yourself from what is very real, but yeah, you, again, you can't do anything about it, right? In the moment yeah. and harboring on those um, emotions and feelings for something that is so far away or seems so yeah. far away yeah. can really bring the mood down, you know? Yeah. Mm. And like, not even so much that, it's just how can I contribute instead of take away, you know, like, mm. Oh, poor me. I'm upset with what's going on in the world. It's not mm. happening to me. Who the fuck am I to be upset? I can be outraged. Right. I, I can, I can, I can kind of propose ideas on how to make it better. Mm -hmm. I can sign the petitions. I can donate. I can yep. repost the infographics, you know, I'd rather just not sit there and wallow in the pity. It's, it's not yeah. me to be pitied. I'm, yeah. I'm sitting pretty. I'm fine. I'm right. Fine. I right. have the luxury to post these things, to send these petitions. Exactly. To donate, you know? Exactly. I love how you said that too. You want to contribute and not take away. Um, yeah. And with the music that you've been putting out, you are contributing, you know? You actually are yeah. like really paying attention to the things that may seem small, but they yeah. add that, you know, full package to the to the Lord Wright experience, right? Now- The LWE. The LWE. Sign up for pre-order now. And speaking of the LWE, we got word from a little birdie that this new name is, or this name, Lord Wright, this artist named Lord Wright is a new name, and that there used to be a whole other artist name. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? And what how the name change happened and what inspired what that? with you? Yes. Um. So basically, Lord is with you. It's been so long. I really don't even know how it came about. Oh, actually, I do. My birth name is Emmanuel. Hey, Emmanuel. Which means God is with you. God is with us. Mm -hmm. Hence, Lord is with you. You know, mm -hmm. kind of go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. But like, after a while, like, I'm a very visual person. Like I always say, like stadiums, like I imagine how 
performances would go. When I look up at a marquee, do I want to see Lord is with you? Personally, I don't. Do I want to see Lord right? Holy fuck, I'm stopping and saying, who is that? You know, it, it just right. has that star power and I need something that kind of live up yeah. to. Yeah. And I feel like Lord Wright is holy fuck, like this bitch yeah. is bad. Right. So it was more so for you the change was because you you felt like you wanted something that just grabbed you by the balls like instantly. Yeah, I wanted to be a one name diva so bad, but it just wasn't in my cards. So Lord Wright is because <laughs> uh, uh, know- Lord, Lord was already taken. Well, I was <laughs> I was going to say, it's unfortunate because that would have been, I think, perfect for you because you do kind of, you, uh, you give the essence of a God, a goddess in the way that you are not, you're not conforming. You are, you're inspiring um, uniqueness and individuality. And I think that is charisma, uniqueness, nerve and talent. All four lies right here. (laughs) with you i appreciate um, that yes, you. Yes. oh you oh you, you. oh you um, so, <laughs> so really quick um i do also want to i want to ask about performance for you like yeah. because i've seen clips i unfortunately have not been there live to see you in action it's yeah. gonna happen soon but performance what is that like for you do you do you like are you one of those artists who are in the studio waiting to like get what you're recording in the studio onto the stage or are you like you know this is for the studio and for the ears and I don't want to re- revisit it ever again you want to know a little secret mm. never performed as lord right or as lord is with you ever mm. no way no way so is that ever pur- is that on purpose intentional like are you doing anything no that- I just Mm. I just, I know I'm very honest with myself and I know mm. when I'm ready for something and I know when I'm not. Right. I'm a f- perfectionist. I'm a, I'm a singer, you know? I feel like there's yeah. a lot of pressure on singers to right. sound amazing. Yeah. And I know what I'm capable of in the right element. That's why right. I took last year mm-hmm. to vocal train with my girl, Katie Riggs. Look Shout out up. Katie Riggs. Work with her. <laughs> Shout out Kathleen Riggs, the one and only. Mm. But I felt the need to put myself through a pop star boot camp almost and bitch I graduated with flying colors and here I am ready to emerge yeah. on the stage so there will be live shows very soon after the video yeah. dropped I got a few offers already and I'm like okay let's go it's game time it's gay time it's so clutch and so important that you know when the moment is right because you don't want to you don't want to be over ambitious and then it's just not fun you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I, I also didn't want bum ass videos and me circulating online and me sounding like shit. Right. Like I, you're not gonna catch me slipping. I don't want you to catch me slipping ever. Yeah, yeah. No, ever. I, it could be you want to. You know, it sounds like you want to have full control. You know, you want to have full control. Of I do. I'm a control experience. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I don't. That's why I pick a song for a video mm. because bitch, high production value is the name of my game. Right. Yeah. I wanted I wanted some fans, some right. tumbling stages. And you're, willing like, to, and you're willing to wait for it, like quality over quantity. I would wait, yeah. But yeah. the Rush video was an exception. You know, it came out exactly how I wanted. And it was perfect too. Like with, perfect. even we with it, it being an exception, it's so great. It's so high quality. It, Plus, yeah, I want something great. to look back on. Mm. I want to I want to look back and be like, oh, I thought I was killing it, huh? I thought I ate yeah. that. Yeah, yeah I, I really mean, thought I ate that. All I these did. singles for you are little time capsule moments of you yeah. know. The Lord right 20 years from now and like yeah. how you have been leading up to that. And I guess also um, another thing to ask listeners, this is for y'all. Are these little breadcrumbs that you're leaving us maybe leading to an album or uh, a mixtape or an EP? EP. EP. All right. All right. Hey, we're taking anything we can get. <laughs> Name to be determined. Release date, uh, more like Shea Ray, spring, summer, uh, more like spring, fall. Uh, <laughs> just know it's coming. Just know it will come. If y'all didn't just get that, I don't know what to tell you. You need to go back and tell you. figure it out. Culture. Yeah. Figure it wow. out. You don't belong here. You're on the wrong page. Uh, uh, so uh, an EP though. Um, yeah, because like I told you earlier, all these tracks that you have out right now can easily live in an EP, but it seems like you've taken an approach. And I want to ask, has there been intention behind the approach that you've been taking with like these little drops that you've Absolutely. been doing? Absolutely. I'm glad you asked because I've been wanting mm. to talk about this. Please do. So each single that I released is all part of the EP, obviously, at the end of the road. Mm. 
being that I'm such a small artist, I wanted every single to have its own moment to shine. Right. Because the way I see it is like each single, this is business thinking, by the way. It's not, it's kind of me separating myself yeah. from the artist. Each single, I see it as like a golden ticket. And I can put mine in a little machine and there's a chance for it to like strike big. Right. Okay. All right. Especially with that. like, yeah. in, speak, like in regards to TikTok. So I'm like, let me have my go with each one of these songs, make, make them each a fully fleshed out moment. Because mm. maybe by the end of this, like six, seven, eight songs, one will hit. And that's all I need. I just need one chance, you know? Right. Yeah. So each single I release, I wanted it to have its own time to shine. Now, getting down to it, we're at the last few songs. I think I have one more single left in me, and then I'm going to finish the EP because I also want there to be an incentive for listeners to listen to the EP and I hate when artists release like the entirety of a project and as like singles and then release the project being like oh look it's new and it's not new it's like you've it's songs you've heard like yeah it takes you away from the full experience of having like I'm not excited anymore yeah 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 that's that's dope that you're gonna keep with that old tradition that seems to be like uh fleeing away having an album release having a full album for people to listen to um and you know i'll be there because i genuinely oh you will i'm a stan at this point i'm a lord right stan i'm an auditory Uh, art stan oh oh you love to see the mutual love now with this upcoming ep is there any or upcoming not me not me putting a lot of pressure on you right now so the upcoming ep titled lord right like yes self-titled this uh so this upcoming ep is there anybody that you can name drop that you're collaborating with or like anybody that you would want to collaborate with potentially here is the thing i think collaboration is a beautiful thing honey a beautiful yeah. thing mm-hmm. however because i have such internal struggles with who lord Wright is i don't think now is the time for me to really collaborate with others Mm. I am so focused on making a name for myself and giving that footprint in the sand as yeah. myself. That's my first priority. I think collaboration is after this stage. Right. Okay. I just okay. Want to, I just want to get something solid out there with my mm. name on it to kind of show you like this what I'm about, this is why I'm here, and this is what I have to say. Yeah. Then moving forward, I can reference back and be like, I've done this. This right. is who I am. I've been there. I've been yeah. there. I've done that. You know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because I have. I've tried collaborating with so many people. Mm-hmm. So many, and nothing ever really comes out of it because it's never the right fit. It's never. It never coincides with what I'm making at the time for myself. Yeah. It's really hard to sucks. find those people you can connect with. Yeah. Yeah. But I do. I would love to have another producer step into the and step into the room and kind yeah. of take over for me because honestly, mm. I love producing myself and I would never let this happen. But like being a little pop robot and letting yeah. it like a fucking like Max Martin take over for me and like write mm-hmm. hands for me, that'd be so cool. I would never yeah. let it happen. It would never happen. But like in a fantasy world where I'm not a control freak, it'd right. be really cool. Yeah. I mean, that because the amount of pressure being a producer in that situation is so crazy because yeah. you know, you know, no matter how much you lie and say, oh, I trust you. I trust you. You don't trust them. You don't trust I don't, them. You, I mean, I don't you, trust you, know. you. I, if I can't be like move over and do it myself, mm-hmm. I, I can't do it. I'm sorry. I just can't. Yeah. Right. And also I don't want to compromise my sound right now. I just don't, I, it's I'm not, in the, I'm not in the mood. I, I'm not, I'm all for compromise, but not when it's my foundation. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems like you want to, it seems like you, like you said, you want to make sure that people know who you are before you add some new girl into the mix. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Simple. It's it's not, it's, yeah. there's no shade at all. I love right. all these small artists that are doing things that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I think it's beautiful. There's room for all of us. I love it. I would love to work with all of them, but like right, right now the time. No, exactly. And that I think divine, I was just talking to another artist earlier today, um, but divine timing is so real because mm-hmm. it does not matter how many t- tools you have in that toolbox. If it ain't the time, it ain't the time. It's just not the time. You can't you know? force it. Right. Because it's like, 
you collaborating with someone right now might not have that same impact of, as you collaborating with someone next year on something yeah. that is 10 yeah. times more, you know, yeah. impacting. So Lady Marmalade hey, would not have happened two years sooner. Look at that. No, exactly. Exactly. It wouldn't have happened. Um, so really quick, uh, now that we've talked about it so much, I do want to play pop uh, before we wrap up yeah. the podcast. Um, so this yeah. is pop by Lord Ray. Give them what they want. Do y'all love pop? We'll be right back. Hi, hi. I'm about to lose control. Like a bubble that you blow. Pop, pop. Got me about to explode. I just don't know. Come on, let's see how long this thing can go. You got the promise that you swallow uh. Chewy, sticky, sweet I swear to God, I think I'm about to explode Blow me up See how far my love can go When it pops, that's how you know Just put your lips together And then you blow Got me ready to go Lord Wright, everyone. Lord Wright. Um, Pop, what a fucking banger. What an amazing song. Thank you, uh, ready to buy. Yes, oh, yes. Thank you. Something that um, has been consistent with all of your singles has been the drive in your voice, right? The the force in your voice. I think that in this interview, um, I haven't really touched on that. You know what I mean? And yeah. in Pop, I think there is, or that was the first time for me where that was a highlight of um of the lord right experience was uh, oh wow you're not like I, there was a point of the song where i was like are they gonna continue to go up with the with like the the build and you did yeah you killed it you tore that shit you. Uh, yeah um i have always been a singer always but kind of being secure in my vocal abilities has been a struggle of mine Mm-hmm. because my vocal training has always been a little rocky now i'm in a place where i have a study teacher you know i know what i'm doing now um i have control i feel comfortable doing what i do it's honestly amazing because you know first and foremost i think i'm a singer you know like that's always been my yeah. bread and butter that, is, that has been my strength that's always been what i prided myself on right I need to trademark pride. It keeps saying yeah, pride. Yeah, I was going to say. Honey, it's, it's already trademarked. It's a Lord Wright exclusive. 
Yeah, yeah. But um, no, so but uh to that point, I think um well continue actually, because you were going somewhere uh, really great with that. Continue. I don't even know where I'm going. <laughs> <sighs> well, um Loki same. I was like, where are we going? I was like, where are we going, bitch? I lost it. It's gone. Oh it is God. gone. It's 9 30 p.m. Jesus. Uh um, or like 11 30. But like so basically I love to sing songs. Yeah, okay, there we go. 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 I'm so glad this is live. I don't know what I would do if this was live. I know, bitch. If it was live, I would have sat here and stuttered my ass all the way to this whole hour. Yeah, I'm convinced that live podcasts are just lies. They're not live. No, it's, they're not real. They're not real. Can be no fucking way. They're not um, real. But yeah, so I guess my question in regards to that now is, or in regards to the vocal essence of not only pop, but just word right in general. Yeah. There is something that's very unique. There's something that, that you have that um that like rasp, not rasp, wrong word. You have that that uh what is what do you call that when you're singing out of your out of your like uh like uh, I know that's not where you're singing from, but it sounds like you're belting. There you go. You're belting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you're almost belting, but you're kind of doing it in a smooth way where it's like this rock and roll like inspiration. Oh, is that what it the, gives? It's what I it gives. Know. I have no perception of what my voice sounds like to others. Like, it's just like, I know what I sound like, but I don't know what that means to others. Well, do you, so I guess it's not intentional. You just kind of are going off of what That's feels just right how it you. is. Yeah, mm. and it's so funny because like, my vocal inspirations are like Elizabeth Fraser and Cocteau Twins. You know, like, mm. like, mm. like, these out of box singers. But, you know, I guess good vocals, it's good, vo- good vocals. I, yeah. I do... I do look up to the greats like Celine, Whitney, mm-hmm. Beyonce, obviously, like they're just the best. Right. Yeah. And I try to incorporate that into my own style in a way. I guess that kind of comes in the form of technique. I guess. Technique is very important. And and that's yeah. what I that's what I want to highlight too, because that is what that's what you can hear when you hear the way you approach your songs. After hearing them all together, you you expect certain things, right? Like we expect um, Nicki Minaj to give us a little, right? Yeah, you know, it's like little trademarks, vocal trademarks. Mm-hmm. You, exactly. I love it. You trademarked. You like you done a good job, a great job of trademarking so early into your into your destiny of becoming. I'm trying to diva. build the universe of Lord Right. I yeah. think the greats were so like the greats were so great because they excelled in building a world. Mm. And that is a talent within itself. And that's at the stage I'm at. I'm building the world. I am, I am, you know, I'm conjuring up the grass, you know, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm painting the sky right now. Mm. You want to make it like a, an immersed experience, right? You don't exactly. want to just I want sell everything some shit. I do to be extremely cohesive. I want the look to be mm-hmm. the same. I want the sound to be the same. I want you to look on the street, see me, and go, oh, yes, we're right. Right. You already know who it is. I think that's gonna be your that's gonna be your selling point, really, and what gives you that that really profitable niche crazy fan base that will never let you go is because they're gonna be like, it's not it's just better, the, never. it's not just Lord. You don't understand. Lord just has that thing, and that thing. I would what... die if somebody said that to me. If I heard that being said about me, I would fucking lose my mind. That would mean so much. I mean, I mean, real. I say that. I say that about you. Like I say, if, if my friend Tyrese. This is actually Stop. stupid. Shout yeah. out to Reese for letting us letting me uh, shoot in the studio, but he's upstairs right now. He can vouch. I told him about your music, and I usually use the word like it's un it's undescribable, but just know it's it. Like oh that's God. how I thank said, you because you really you I really would want are no doing other a descriptor. Lot. I would want no other descriptor. Yeah, you you are a great artist. You are the future. And um, before we come to an end with this with this podcast and thank you again for coming on like really like, oh my god it's been an honor thank you for having me seriously like i mean that with my whole pussy you're gonna be like so huge so fast so again i say this to everybody's coming on just remember oh, us. you don't forget us stop it stop it <laughs> but uh before we wrap up i do want to ask about any future and this could be like you know inside of art or outside of art any future um any future aspirations for lord right um manifest. i want to take over the fucking world i want to be the biggest that, that i can be i want to create the next pop bible i know that's i know it sounds very ambitious but i feel like you have to aim high 
If you're not aiming you high, where you aiming? High. Yeah, exactly. You have to aim high and set your sights up for the sky. That's just how it has to be, or else you're never going to elevate or succeed in anything. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that that's sick. That um, you know, somebody said this. The sky. Some people say the sky is the limit, but for us, the sky is what we stand on to reach the top. How about right? that? How about Amen, that? bitch. Amen. <laughs> Not me taking you out of church today. No, uh, we're already there. Well, you've you've experienced the experience, which is Lord Wright. And if you want to continue to follow Lord Wright and um, get new updates on releases, Lord, please tell people where they can find you. You can find me at L zero R D W R I G H T on pretty much everything. You heard it there. All right, so um, we're gonna play one more song when we close out, or while we close out the podcast, and it's gonna be a song of your choice. Let me know which one you want to play. This is so... Come on, Shiza, Gaga. <laughs> Wait, I love that song, but it has to be one of your songs. Oh, fuck. Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, bitch. Um... Let's do Rush again. Why not? Hey, all right. Oh, wait, have we done Rush before? We have, yeah. We, uh, well, Let's do Rush again. One more we time. have. We'll gaslight Put the listener, off. but we definitely have. Yeah, we've heard it. All right, so this is Rush by Lord Wright. Um, once more, thank you so much, baby, for coming to the pod. Thank and, you. And hopefully we don't get flagged forever and ever and ever, but we will have you back. So please answer our call, yeah? I love you, America. Fast money on the dash, took me in the eyes, tell me, tell me that you want it this way Don't count myself, but I commit the crime in the right place, you, 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 you can have it all day ah, I laugh like a cash going on my ass, the dash, and I'm just a motherfucking parlay At the end of the day, no need to be safe, why? Cause it's just a game I play, and it makes me feel so good I Right. Hey, hey, hey. And it don't matter now what you say Cause baby, baby, I get my way It's just a game I 